No, I think Russia has uh, penetrated the region quite extensively over the past, uh, probably over the past 10, 12 years. Uh, certainly uh, during the past few years when Putin uh, realized that there were still uh, questions, unresolved questions in the Balkans that he could exploit to Russia's advantage. So Russia has penetrated uh, 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 some countries more than others, of course, but it's penetrated political systems, security structure, intelligence networks, the media environment, um, some religious organizations, religious bodies, cultural organizations. So across the board, I would say, and of course, uh, Serbia and the Republika Srpska in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina have been the most affected directly. And, and to such a degree, I would say that both Vucic and Dodik, President Vucic and President Dodik are acting as proxies of Moscow in the region. Um, there's a lot to debate in terms of what Russia could do, but I would say this, that the war uh, in Ukraine, the war that Russia launched on Ukraine, and the fact that it's not going very well, uh, will, will actually, if anything, encourage Russia to be more provocative uh, in regions where it can undermine Western interests, where it can preoccupy NATO, and of course, the, 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 the biggest candidate here, of course, is the Western Balkans. Absolutely. Uh, I couldn't agree with them more. Uh, two things. One, uh, the Vucic government has shown much more clearly than before that it's allied with Russia, that it's allied with the Putin regime. It hasn't gone along with the sanctions. It, up until recently, it was still allowing uh, Russian flights into Belgrade. Uh, it hasn't imposed any, any uh, trade or energy embargoes like increasing number of countries are doing. It has incredibly close uh, uh, connections. It encourages demonstrations uh, in support of Putin, support of the war against Ukraine. And we've seen most of the demonstrations, not everybody, of course, but most of the demonstrations in Belgrade uh, have been uh, pro-Putin, have been pro-Moscow. So that's, I would say, one side. Um, Kosovo has to distinguish itself in a way from Serbia. Um, in many respects, I would say it can compare itself to Ukraine. In other words, uh, if Ukraine had been a member of NATO um, a few months ago, or a few weeks ago, even I don't think uh, I don't think Russia would have intervened because they would have provoked an American uh, reaction. Our mistake was not to bring these countries in Georgia and Ukraine in particular when it was possible. So Kosovo finds itself in a similar situation. The best protection Kosovo can have from any kind of revanchism. Uh, from Serbia would be to be a part of NATO. I'm not saying Serbia is necessarily going to attack, but Kosovo itself would feel safer. So in that respect, I would say it's a good opportunity um, for Kosovo to show its pro-NATO, pro-Western, pro-democracy orientation, and to show that it's part of the against uh, an expansionist Russia. So I think this is a good moment to push for NATO and also for EU membership. You could always do more. Um, I know it's easier to, to speak, to say do more when you're standing outside. When you're in government, it's a little bit more difficult um, because of constraints, because of pressures from some of the European countries, even pressures from our State Department not to go too far. Uh, but I think the government is doing well. I think it's stated its position. I think it's stated what, what Kosovo's aspirations are. Uh, it's underscored that, that Kosovo is probably the most pro-American uh, country in the region, um, that it's, it's it, I'm sure Kosovars would be, would be willing to fight alongside their American comrades in NATO if called upon. Uh, so I, I think Kosovo, of course, a lot of military reform still needs to be done, a lot of reorganization and so on and so forth to meet all the NATO standards. Uh, but I think the more, look, let's put it this way, if you don't ask for something, you never get it. If you ask, you may not get it straight away, but people remember that that's what you want. Yeah, well, it's not going too well for them. <laughs> Let's put it this way. They expected, according to all the plans, the organization, the preparations, the logistics and everything, they expected this to be over in a few days.
In other words, that they'd march on Kiev, that the government would collapse, that they could put in some sort of puppet administration, they could control the Ukrainian military. Um, in other words, they were using the example of 2014. What they did not realize, or uh, let's say their military intelligence wasn't good enough to understand that in the intervening eight years, Ukraine had built a very formidable military. Um, that it had, even though it didn't acquire all the weapons that it wanted, I could imagine if it had acquired all the weapons that they wanted, the Russian army would probably be defeated by now, but they didn't. So it's still an uphill struggle. Uh, but what I think the Russians completely miscalculated is the um, determination of the Ukrainian people. When you're defending your homes, when you're defending your family, your land, your territory, your history, your identity, you fight so much harder than when you're invading and trying to impose something on another country. Um, so I think there was a huge uh, miscalculation uh, in Russian military intelligence, huge political miscalculation about uh, Ukraine's resistance. Um, and in terms of how, how it's going to go, I can't, nobody can forecast exactly how this will end. It may go on for quite a while. Every war, as you know, has ups and downs. Uh, it depends partly what Russians do next. They're withdrawing from some parts of the country, uh, some parts of Ukraine, occupied Ukraine. Will they go to other parts to try and strengthen, for instance, the Donbass region, capture more territory there? Uh, they are clearly trying to get more troops from around the country. There are reports of from the Far East, even they're pulling troops out of Georgia to go and fight in, uh, in Ukraine. So they're getting increasingly desperate. What's going to be interesting, though, uh, Mentor, is the uh, spring draft. In other words, they have the um, military uh, conscription coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time. We'll see how many people try and avoid military conscription, because I think now Russians understand that their conscripts, the people that are going to be drafted, are going to be sent as cannon fodder to Ukraine. So how much resistance there will be to that, I think will be incredibly important in terms of the uh, capability of the Russian army to sustain such losses. You know, the last estimates, even conservative estimates, they've lost at least 15,000 troops dead, KIA, killed in action. That's more than they lost in 10 years in Afghanistan. That's one month plus hundreds of tanks, uh, armored vehicles, uh, airplanes, helicopters, you name it, they've lost. This has been an incredible, thus far, incredible success, if not complete victory yet, for the Ukrainian army. Uh, and I think, as you know, every uh, success breeds more success, but one always has to be careful because Russia does have uh, weapons that the Ukrainians don't have. They still have the air power that Ukraine can't cope with fully. Uh, so there's still a long way to go, I would say. Yeah. Uh, as it happens, I wrote and finished a book just before the war began. Uh, and it's called Failed State, A Guide to Russia's Rupture. I believe, actually, that Russia eventually will break up. Uh, the, the, the state as it exists now, this Russian Federation, which really isn't a federation, uh, a bit like the Yugoslav Federation, isn't going to last very long. It's going to collapse. And I think the war that Putin uh, led Russia into, that the Kremlin led Russia into, will accelerate that process. Uh, so my book is coming out in a few weeks time. I just have to update it with the war. But basically, everything I wrote uh, before the war, I stick by.